Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Heron, and this is the first video for Intermediate Algebra B. This is Unit 6, Notes 1, talking about exponential functions. So, <coughs> excuse me, exponential functions, here's kind of what happens. An exponential function is different than a linear or a quadratic or anything like that because the variable, the thing that we keep changing, the x, is actually in the exponent, okay? So this is kind of what's constantly changing. It's in the exponent, so we got to kind of figure out what happens when I do that. So note a couple things. One, a is bigger than zero because a negative number would act kind of weird with an exponent. And a is not one, and here's why. Because if I have y raised to the one to the x, it doesn't matter what x is. My answer is always still going to be one. Like if I had one to the tenth, that's still one. If I had one to the twelfth, that's still one. If I have one to the... 232nd, that's still 1. So it's got to be slightly bigger than 1. So let's take a look here. So y equals 4 to the x, raised to the x power. All right, so let's start off simple. All right, so for our x's, let's just put in 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, for the y's, we got to calculate that, figure out that's 4 to the 0. Well, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. 4 to the 1 is just going to be 4. 4 squared is going to be 16. 4 cubed, that's 4 times 4 times 4. That's 16 times 4. That's going to be 64. And 4 to the 4th is going to be 256. So let's plot these points. So at 0, I'm at 1. At 1, I'm at 4. At 2, I'm all the way up here at 16 already. 16. At 3, I'm at 64, so I'm way up here. And at 4, I'm nowhere near that. So it's going to look something like this. So now please notice kind of what it looks like on the back side. On the back side would be, it's going to be a fraction or a decimal. And here's kind of why. So let's just say I go backwards in my table. So instead of going 0, 1, 2, 3, I go backwards. So now my next one would be negative 1. Well, that's going to be 4 raised to the negative 1, but a negative is just means it flips over. That's all it means. So if I go negative 2, that's going to be 4 to the negative 2. So that's 1 over 4 squared. That's 1 over 16. So going this way, the fractions keep getting smaller and smaller and keep getting closer and closer to 0. So that's why the, that's how the function looks like that. So 3 to the x is, you know, about as simple. So let's just say I'll start with a negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So 3 to the x, that means 3 to the negative 1, so that'll be 1 third. 3 to the 0 is going to be 1. 3 to the first is going to be 3. 3 squared is going to be 9. And 3 cubed, 3 times 3 times 3, is going to be 27. So here's kind of what my points are going to look like. At negative 1, I'm at 1 third, so I'm right about there. At 0, I'm at 1. At 1, I'm at 3. At 2, I'm at 9. And at 3, I'm at 27, so I'm like way up here. So once again, it's going to look kind of like this. Now, please note that on both cases, at 0, I crossed through 1. So when x was 0, I crossed through 1. That was the same thing back on this previous page as well. 0 and 1, now on this one, 0 and 1, that's not, an, that's not a coincidence, okay? That's what it's going to look like. So for both of these, the y-intercept is going to be 1. So y equals 4 to the 2x. So now here's where you got to be careful because, um, because you got to remember order of operations. So this can get a little tricky if you're not careful. So I got negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So if I do negative 1, so that's going to be 4 times 2 to the negative 1. So I do exponents first. So that's going to be 4 on top. 2 to the negative 1 goes to the bottom, so that's positive 2. So that's going to be simplified to just 2. So in negative 1, I'm at 2. So at 0, that's going to be 4 times 2 to the 0. But remember, 2 to the 0 is 1, so that's going to be 4. So notice, on a past 2, my y-intercept was 1. Now my y-intercept is 4, like it's 
like the four out front, move the whole thing up to four, which it kind of did. So to the first would be four times two to the first, so just four times two, which would be eight. Two means four times two squared, which will be 16. And two, or 16, three would be four <clears throat> times two to the third. Two to the third will be eight, so that'll be 32. All right, so the two to the x, you know, that's kind of a simple exponential, but throwing the four out front makes it a little bit bigger. So at zero, I'm at four. I'm at one, I'm at eight. At two, I'm all the way up here at 16. And at three, I take off all the way up to 32. So it's, it's steepens out really, really quickly here. Whoa. Kind of like that. All right. So what happens if this is a fraction? Well, this is kind of where things can get a little fun too. So let's take a look here. Let's start with these. I like having one negative. I like having zero and I like having low numbers because then there's way less chance I'm going to screw something up. So negative one, if I put that in here, looks like that. So remember what negative one does. Negative one flips it over. So this becomes six times three. Okay, I got to flip this one over, so it becomes three. So at negative one, I'm actually at 18. At zero, so that's going to be six times one third times zero. So that's going to be six times one, which is six. Six times one third to the one is going to be six times one third, which will be two. Six times one third squared, well, one third squared, that's like one squared over three squared. So that's going to be six times one over nine. So that's actually going to be two thirds. Then six times one third cubed, well, one third cubed is like one cubed over three cubed. So that's going to be six over one over 26 times one over 27. So if I divide both those by three, or by three, I get two ninths. So now take a look at what this one does. Because this is a fraction, it almost kind of flips over my graph. So at negative one, I'm at 18. At zero, I'm at six. Hey, look at that. Because it's six, that's kind of what my y-intercept is. That's not a coincidence. If there's nothing out front, it'll be one. Otherwise, the y-intercept will be kind of whatever's out front. So at one, I'm at two. At 2, I'm at 2 thirds, and at 3, I'm at 2 ninths. So it's going to be kind of a reflection of what the previous graphs have been. So what does this do? What if I have 2 to the x plus 3? Well, let's move this around here a little bit. So let's go negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's see what happens. So I take 2 to the negative 1 plus 3. 2 to the negative 1 means flip it over. So that's going to be 1 half plus 3. So that's going to be just three and a half. And I like fractions way better than decimals for a future reference. Second one, two times zero plus three, that's going to be one plus three, so that'll be four. Two to the first plus three, it's pretty obvious, that's going to be five. Two squared plus three, you guys should start seeing a pattern here, that's going to be seven. Two cubed plus three is going to be eleven. So it's going to be 3 and a half, 4, 5, 7, 11. So what's my y-intercept? My y-intercept is going to be 4. So there's nothing out front here, so it's kind of like 1, but then because I add the 3, so it's going to make it 4. So negative 1, I'm at 3 and a half. At 0, I'm at 4. 1, I'm at 5. 2, I'm at 7. 3, I'm at 11. So this one goes up. Not as much, not as fast as the other ones, but it still kind of goes up exponentially. So 2 times 0.5x minus 1. So this one is going to be, there's a lot of pieces to this one. we got to keep straight. So negative 1, so that's going to be 2 times 0.5, or I like 1 half to the negative 1 just because it visualizes it better. So 1 half to the negative 1 goes first, so that means I'm going to flip it over. So I'm going to have 2 times 2 over 1 minus 1. So that means I'm going to have 4 minus 1, which will be 3.
So for 0, 2 times 1 half to the 0 minus 1. So this is going to be 2 times 1 minus 1, which will just be 1. So that's my y-intercept. All right, because this 2 out front would make you think that it's 2, but then you subtract 1 to get 1. All right, so now where am I at? I'm at 1. So 2 times 1 half to the first minus 1. Well, 1 half to the first, just 1 half times 2 is 1. So this is just a fancy way of saying 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. For 2, 2 to the 1 half squared minus 1. Well, 1 half squared is actually 1 fourth minus 1. So this would be 1 half minus 1. So that's going to be negative 1 half. So I'm hoping you're starting to see a trend here. So for three, for three, it's going to be two times one half to the third minus one. So one half to the third is going to be one eighth minus one. So that's going to be one fourth minus one. So that'll be a negative three fourths. So at negative one, I'm at three. At zero, I'm at one. And at one, I'm at zero. So you see how this negative 1 kind of moves the whole thing down a little bit. Before, we were going right at this, right at the x-axis. Now we're moving it down. So at 2, I'm a negative 1 half. Here, I'm a 3, 4. So it looks kind of like this. So movie ticket sales decrease each weekend after an opening of the function 49.9 times 0.692 raised to the W models the earnings of a popular movie. In this equation, E represents earnings in millions of dollars, and W equals 0 represents opening weekend. Graph the function, estimate how much money the movie made in the opening weekend. So, W equals 0 represents the opening weekend. So, W is like your X and E is like your Y. Graph the function, estimate how much money, for the, the move, how much money the movie made the opening weekend. So, you can't really have a negative opening weekend. So, if we start at 0, go 1, go 2, go 3... And go four, and then we can put this in. So at zero, you know, I get 49.9 times 0 0.692 to the zero. Well, this is just a fancy way of saying one. So at zero, I'm going to be at 49.9. At one, so that's going to be 49.9 times 0 0.692 to the first, which just means it's just 0 0.692. So that is going to be 34.5308. All right, and it's going to kind of go down from there. So at zero, you know, if I count each off, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. You can kind of get an idea what this is going to look like. So at zero, I'm basically almost at 50. At one, I'm at 34.5308. 538, so that's right about there. At 2, that's going to be 49.9 times 0 0.692 squared. So 0 0.692 squared is really, really small. That's like 0 0.478864 times 49.9 is going to be 23.895. So at 2, I'm at 23.8. So you can kind of see how it's getting close real quick. So for 3.692 cubed times this, so that's going to be 16.53, and a 4, that's going to be 11.44. So here, 2, I'm at 23, 3, I'm at 16. 4, I'm at 11.4. So you can kind of see the trend that it's going to follow. Something like that. So that'll be kind of what that looks like. How's it, how much money to make the opening weekend? It's going to make $49.9 million, which is pretty good. All right, so some people say the value of a new car decreases as soon as you drive it off the lot. This is true. So you start off with a $25,000 vehicle. 0.82t, where t represents the time and years of the purchase. Graph the function, estimate the car's value after five years. So five years, 
you know, when you buy it at time zero, one, two, three, four. Now let's do this. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. So you can figure out what the value will look like after five years. So at zero, one, two, three, four, five. So one year, that's going to be 25 grand times 0.82 to the first. All right, so you're starting off at 25 grand. All right, so let's see. So, so we can go, let's go 5. 10, 15, 20, 25 grand. Start, start with something like that. So you're starting off here at $25,000. So, where do we start here? So you start at 25. After one, it's going to be 20,500. After two, it's going to be 16, 8, 10. After three, it's going to be 13, 7, 84. After four, it's going to be 11, 3, 0, 3. After five years, it's going to be $9,268.50. So all I did was just a quick calculation on a calculator. So at one, I'm at 20,500. At two, I'm just above 16. At three, I'm right at 13. So that's going to be right about here. And at 4, I'm at 11,000, so that's right above here. At 5, I'm at 9,000, so that's right there. So you can see how this is going to start to level off. You know, I'm not going to hit 0 with the cost, with the price of the car. All right, does this chart show exponential behavior? So let's take a look. So let's go 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, well, maybe 50. 40, 50, 60, and here we'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, not like that, let's do this, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, so on, so at 0, I'm at 10, at 10, I'm at 25, at 20, I'm at 62 and a half, we'll be right about here, and at 30, I'm at 156. So that's going to be way up here. Does this chart look exponential to you? I would say probably yes. All right, does this chart, chart show exponential behavior? Okay, so here we can go 0, we can go 1, 2, 3, 4. And here we can go, well, it starts off at 1, so maybe we can make, maybe we can make this one 1. Make this one 1, make this 0, make halfway in between 0.5. So at 0, I'm at 1. At 1, I'm at 0.5. So far, it could be linear. You never know. At 2, I'm going to be at 0.25, so that's halfway in between. And at 3, I'm at 0.125, which would be halfway in between right here. So there, I would argue, yes, that would, could be exponential. All right, do your homework so it doesn't grow exponentially. Have a good day, and we'll talk to you soon.